One key warning sign for a cult mm -hmm. is that they have a single charismatic leader. Mm -hmm. The media state that you are young and charismatic. Oh, nice. <laughs> Does this not make you a cult leader? <laughs> Well, hopefully I'm young and charismatic. I'm 51 years old at the moment. Um, and hopefully if they're saying that's young, that's pretty good. <laughs> and no, my, like, the feeling is, my feeling is I am enthusiastic for yeah. what I teach, certainly. Uh, and if that makes me charismatic, well, I'm charismatic, I suppose. But um, that's not how I see it. I see it as being enthusiastic for the things that I love yeah. and teaching the things that I love. And of course, because I love them, my enthusiasm carries through with everything that I do. Mm -hmm. I'm enthusiastic about the way I engage my own life and I'm also enthusiastic about the way I share the truth with other people. And I think, again, people are, like the media often have these accusations levelled at me as a way of trying to manipulate the truth. Mm -hmm. they, they're basically making the, um, basically the accusation that because I'm charismatic it means that I'm manipulative. Uh, or because I'm enthusiastic, it means I'm manipulative. And that's not the case at all. Anybody who knows me knows that I don't manipulate them at all. Mm -hmm. I talk to them about love, mm -hmm. that's all. And I don't manipulate or de decide, you know, decide what they have to do with their life or their, their, desire, or their desires. But I am very straight and enthusiastic when I talk about love with people, certainly. Yeah. And I always will be, in fact. And I make no apologies for that because I don't feel any apologies are necessary. And um, I feel people are afraid of charismatic people, though, mm -hmm. is, which is interesting. I, I don't understand why that is the case. Any person who's truly engaged and in love with what they do yeah. is, is surely going to come across with some kind of like enthusiasm or what people call charisma. Um, and I, I feel that would be normal. In fact, if you really loved what you did, you, you, would, you, you would let this childlike feeling that you have about what you do shine. Yep. And I don't see any problem with that at all. Um, I do feel that this whole accusation of being young and charismatic type of thing is a way, again, a, a media way of manipulating people. So they are being a cult, again, mm -hmm. by manipulating people, by using certain terminology that suits what they believe are, you know, can justify their accusations of cult behaviour. And I, I feel that uh, that's unfortunate, but the media, in my experience, have been liars. Uh, uh, most of them have lied to us. Most of them have lied to about us. Uh, there's been very few people that, at this stage that I've found uh, in the media who have had any degree of ethics or morality. And the way, those ones that I have found, uh, I think are wonderful people. Yeah. Um, and they are quite unique mm -hmm. from what I've observed. And, uh, and it's interesting, they say, the, m many of the media people when they first interact with us say, don't tar us with the same brush that you're tarring other people. Mm -hmm. Now, I go, okay, so don't tar me with the same brush that you're tarring every other person who says he's Jesus. Yeah. Do, you know, like, it cuts both ways, doesn't yes. it? Yes. And what I find happening quite frequently is the media tars me with a brush of, you know, that all the other, if we can call them cult leaders, which are actually in many cases cult leaders who are manipulative, controlling, bossing people around, telling them what to do, none of which we, I do. Um, they are tarring me with the same brush just because I'm saying that I'm Jesus. Mm -hmm. So just because I make the statement that I'm Jesus, they then think that they can assume, that they, they can make a lot of assumptions about me without any knowledge and without any personal experience. Mm. And, and I say to them, well, that's just the same as me making assumption that you're a media person, so you're going to be a liar and a cheat because yeah. that's what every other experience I've had with media people, bar one or two, have been, uh, liars and cheats. Um, so, so, okay, if, if you want me to treat you <laughs> with some, like, open-mindedness uh, by saying, well, every person is an individual, then how about you start cheating me as if I'm one? Yeah. Like as if I might be different to the other persons that you've observed, because I, I, can, I can assure you that I am. Mm. Um, I, I feel that if people had that approach, then they'd probably get along pretty well with me with regard to any interaction. Yeah. But unfortunately, most people come into the interactions, particularly media people, come into the interactions with me already tarring me with the same brush that they've tarred every other person who said they're Jesus. 
And, you know, it just might likely be that I am Jesus. You know, you don't know. <laughs> and, yeah. and also, just because I'm saying I'm Jesus doesn't mean that I do the other things that other people who say that Jesus do. To be very honest with you, I doubt sometimes, well, I doubt, as you know, just about everything I see presented in a documentary these days, in a documentary format these days. So I don't even feel qualified to say that those other people who say, who do those things actually do. Exactly. Because my experience with the media is that they have lied. With us. With us. So how can I assume that they're not lying about those people? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. This is the thing. It is if, it's, if they've lied about us, which they have categorically done. Yes. And, and done so many times that it's, always, you know, it's just like, here we go again yeah. type of thing, then of course they must have lied about other people. Mm -hmm. and, and so you, it's very, very hard to trust a person who continuously lies. And so this is why we have our different things that we engage with the media now, mm -hmm. where they've got, to, they've got to engage a promise with us to treat us lovingly if they want to have an interaction with us. Mm -hmm. Because if they don't, then we just don't even want an interaction with them anymore. Yeah. Because they are or have proven themselves to be, in many cases, very unloving individuals and collective organisations. But to be clear, we, we ask for that promise up front, but we don't then treat them, or especially you don't treat them, no. with any level of prejudice beyond that point. No. Everyone has, a, has a, an opportunity then to show... As I've said to every one of them, even during the filming, We've, we've given you an opportunity here to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. And, and I, uh, many times, as I've told you, know what they're going to do with that opportunity. And I know many times that I'm giving an opportunity they're just going to lie about. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I'll give them one opportunity. And if they lie about it, then they probably won't get another. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how God works too. You know, if you're going to continuously do something that's unloving, God doesn't give you other opportunities. Yeah. God waits until you learn the rule of what's loving and what isn't. And that's what I'm going to do too, because I want to be at one with God. I want to be at one with the way God interacts with all of God's creation, including other people. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do, and that's what I do. So no, I'm not some grandiose cult leader who has a you know grandiose following. If I was if I was as um, charismatic as they all say, though, maybe I'd have more followers. <laughs> <laughs> followers uh, in the loose term of the word. Of course, uh, we have no followers, so not very charismatic. Obviously not charismatic enough <laughs> to have enough followers. Yeah. And I do feel this thing of when you tell the truth to people, there's two kinds of people who respond. Yeah. There's the people who respond to truth going, I know this is the truth. I can feel it's the truth. And that attracts me to it. Mm -hmm. And then there's the kind of people who hate the truth. They just hate it, you know, and they'll do everything in their power to oppose it, lie about it, you know, accuse you, you know, try to, you know, kill you in the end. That's mm. what they often do. And, and I'm very interested in talking with the first group of people, mm -hmm. the group of people who have a desire for truth and have a desire for love and have a desire for themselves to become more loving. And I'm not very interested at all in talking to the second group of people Mm -hmm. uh, those people who have a desire to just ridicule truth and ridicule love and all those kind of things. I have no desire really to engage those kind of people. And to be honest, you know, the only types of engagement I have with those people are when they're forced upon me uh, through some kind of circumstantial thing that occurs. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's probably the way it's always going to be. Mm. But I wouldn't call that charismatic either. No. I would just call that logical. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you want to share your time, giving it away for free? Why would you want to share your time with a group of people who are just going to ridicule you? Of course, you're not going to want to do that. Nobody in their right mind would do that. Uh, then if you did that, you'd be crazy. And, uh, and I'm often accused of being crazy, but I don't do crazy things. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's probably my answer to the charismatic thing. I, I think it's yes. Um, I am a very enthusiastic person for love and truth. And you're always going to see that. And it's going to get worse. <laughs> when I say get worse, I mean, I mean I'm going to become passionate. more passionate and charismatic or, or enthusiastic about what I teach yeah. as I grow. Yep. Yeah. And perhaps before we finish on this question, within the question it says that, they, that a sign for a cult is that they have a single charismatic leader. Yep. Can you talk to the singular aspect of it? Oh, okay, yeah. Um, 
Any person who is a leader in love and truth naturally will be a single leader. You know, they, they will be different to the people around them naturally. Mm -hmm. So if I'm truly practicing what I preach, I will become a leader in what I practice and preach. Mm -hmm. And as a result, uh, because, and, and it will be because I will be, be practicing exactly what I preach and, and doing that in my day-to-day -day life, right? Now, as I do that, naturally, I will stand out yeah. if I do that. And that's the case with anybody, any, any good scientist in any endeavor will become a leader in their field. They'll become a single leader in their field because they've engaged a certain area or endeavor that they've become proficient and professional at. Yeah. And, and, you know, driven by their own passions and desires, they've become very good at. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, they will automatically become a person who is acknowledged as the leader in that particular field. Well, I'm the leader in the field of connection with God. Yeah. Like, I am. And, and uh, that's not a statement of arrogance, it's just a statement of truth. Like no one else ever that I've ever met or ever have observed has ever come close to any of the reasonings that I have as a result of my connection with God. Now, anybody I feel who, who listens to the material I present will find that. Mm -hmm. However, that doesn't mean that I, that I am uh, better than anybody or, or more... <clears throat> God views me as better than everybody else. God loves every individual on this planet just the same amount. It's their ability to receive that love is severely curtailed by their own actions. Mm -hmm. And so I, I don't feel I'm any special because of that position, but it is a position mm -hmm. currently that, I, that I, I suppose you could say enjoy. It's not something that might be permanent. There might be other people who eventually learn far more about God than I've ever learned and so they would become the leader and I'd be very, very happy to follow them yeah. once that occurs, if that occurs. And I'm okay with that. And do you envisage there being sort of yourself in this leadership uh, sort of singularly with sort of helping people a long way back or do you... No, what I'm, what I'm trying to do is I, I'd love every person on the earth to be a leader in love. Like, I really would. And that, that is one of my primary desires for returning back to earth, is for people to learn how to be a leader in love. Um, I feel that, that it will take time for that mm. to occur. Um, and there are many reasons why 14 of us came back to earth. And that was because they all had the opportunity also, not that they necessarily are engaging that opportunity, but they have all also had the opportunity to become leaders in the same way, mm -hmm. leaders in love in the same way. So, so there's, I don't desire to, have, to be like at the pinnacle and everybody else be below me. That's not the way I feel. The way I feel is I'd love everybody to be my brother and sister who's doing the same thing as I am with regard to love and truth. Yep. That's what I would love. If everyone did the same thing as I do with regard to love and truth, we, all of the problems in the earth would disappear. There'd be no war on this planet. There would be no starvation, no malnutrition on this planet. There would be, most of our medical diseases would all have disappeared if they did what I did. So and you're saying if everyone listened to you, the world would be perfect? Oh, the world would be a hugely improved place if everyone listened, but, but they don't have to listen. No. Right? And the only reason why that'd be, it'd be a better place if they listened was because I listened to God. And, and the reality is if every, every person comes to practice what I, what I practice, they would come to listen to God too. They wouldn't need to listen to me anymore they would listen to God and they would know that going to war is, is the wrong thing. They would know that watching 50 million children star starve every year because of the economy is wrong. Mm -hmm. They'd know all of these things and they'd do something about it if they really loved, yeah. right? And governments would do something about it because the people in the go who, who vote for the government would want them to do something about it. And the medical profession would change and the, and the government profession would change, the health professions would change, the religious, all of the religious faiths would change because all of them have unloving teachings that, that promote division and in fact, in some cases, promote war. Mm -hmm. you know, and all of these things are out, out of harmony with love. And if everyone followed what I practiced, none of that would happen. So then as a leader, do you feel that you are the model that people should listen to and copy? Certainly. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, like honestly, any person who 
practices love and truth in their day to day life becomes a model that any other person can follow. Yeah. That you know to to pra to practice the same thing, of course. And and if I didn't believe that, I would I wouldn't be teaching what I believed is the truth. Yeah. No, it makes no sense. So like, of course, what I feel is the truth. Um, I'm going to teach. And of course, I believe it, it is the solution to all of mankind's problems. Otherwise, I wouldn't teach it. I would try to find some other solution that is real, you know. Yeah. But this is the real solution to everything. And, and, it, and it's the real solution because it's God's truth, mm -hmm. not my own. It's just something that I've discovered. And every other person on this planet has an opportunity to discover the same thing. So do they discover it by doing what you do? Yes, because there is only one. I've had to discover the way to do it. Each person on this planet is going to have to discover the way to do it. And the way to do it is the way I'm doing it. Yeah. Right. So is that to get up and do 10 push-ups when you wake up in the morning and no. then eat like a green smoothie for breakfast? And then, <laughs> you know, I suppose what I'm asking you to clarify is when you say do as I do, basically, mm -hmm. I suppose there's a huge context or a huge body of work. Of course, there's 1,200 hours at the moment of videos that people can see what I'm recommending to them yeah. that I do. Yeah. And the reality is it's all about the relationship with God and developing the relationship with God, allowing God's love to enter the soul. That will transform you. That's when you will become a more loving person and individual and then you will become a leader in, on the earth with regard to love and truth. Yeah. And, and then you'll be doing what I do. Yeah. And, and yes, you will need to do what I do in order to have a relationship with God because it's the only way you can have a relationship with God. It's the only way. There's no other way. There's only one way. It's yeah. the narrow and straight path I talked about uh, that is mentioned in the Bible and it's, uh, that's the only way. No, there's no other way to do this. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for bearing with me. I, I was really just... Because we're in a discussion about cults and I know a lot of people could watch this as a standalone series. Yes. And I know in a lot of cults there is a lot of emphasis placed upon uh, rules, as we were about to talk about in another question, and regimented routines. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about doing as you do, you're not really, you're talking about the way. Of course. As opposed to a set of, as a lifestyle, I suppose, or a of, set of rules. Of course, yeah. Yeah, it's not yeah. a lifestyle, as you know. No. It's a, it's a way of life that is directly driven by desire for a relationship with God and doing what God requires to have this relationship. Yeah. And God requires that we allow love to enter us and we allow that love to affect our life. Mm -hmm. and, and yes, the way I'm doing it is the only way to do it. Yeah. And you can try to drum up some other way if you want, but you're going to find that's unsuccessful. This is a tried and proven way over my last 2,000 years of my life. Mm -hmm. so, so this is what I'm saying to you. It is the way to God. I know many of you don't accept that and many of you don't believe it. And many of you think I'm arrogant suggesting that. But later on in your life, you will find that I wasn't arrogant at all. In fact, I was quite humble in saying that this is the way yeah. and that this is the only way. I've had to come to terms with the fact that it's not my way. It's God's way. Yeah. And I've had to come to accept it just like you're going to have to if you really want to have a relationship with God. Yeah. But I don't force you to. You don't, you're not forced into doing it. You've got free will. You're allowed to do what you want. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to do this, then don't do it. That's, mm -hmm. that's okay. Don't attack me for, for creating it because I didn't create it. God did. And, and don't attack me just because you don't want to do it. Just own up to the fact I don't want to be loving and go away and be your unloving self if that's what you want to do. Don't expect me to agree with that because I can't. Mm -hmm. I, I don't feel that anybody who chooses to be unloving is actually doing themselves or other people a service. Yeah. And they're not. So I feel quite strongly that if we all desired love and we all practiced love and we all desired truth and practiced truth and we all did things God's way, this world is going to be a remarkably different place. But it's up to you whether you choose to do it. I'm not going to force you. I'm just telling you the truth about it. That's all.